us and the rest of the people who do it. You know, and but um, we have again another legend topographer who's very familiar with our program, by the way. Um, we were fortunate to have Peter join us. I, I want to say Peter about eight or nine years ago. Um, that long? You know, yeah, I know. And we we had a jam packed room. I remember, you know, and um, uh, you did this wonderful uh, hand lettering drawing and posters. I you just whipped it out. You know, we hung it on the um, in the room, and then you just went at it, man. And then I think the kids were so, so mesmerized by your work. Um, if we had, uh, you know, TikTok or any of the Instagram, those kind of social media, that would have blown away, uh, blew up instantaneously. But yeah, no, we never videoed that, did we? <laughs> no, it was another technology back it's then, really you know? Yeah. So, but I'm we're- get better at that, yeah. Absolutely, but we're, we're really uh, delighted, uh, Peter, that you could join us again uh, today and then sharing your, your work and also your journey. You. Uh, and, um, Again, let's give uh, Peter a big round of applause. A uh, see some yeah. welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Sorry, um, Josh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, as you know, um, Peter Greco is a practitioner in the art of traditionally inspired handcrafted lettering and typography. His continuous exploration and passion has enabled him to reach beyond design into the realm of fine art. Turning to graphic design while specializing in typography, he graduated from New York School's Visual of Arts in 1977. He then worked for international type-based corporations, photo lettering, designing alphabets, and composing and editing type. The typographic chief artist and designer has spent his entire adult life learning the mastery of communication through language and lettering. His artwork celebrates the centuries-old tradition of the art of calligraphy and the fascinating world of typography, also paying homage to many different cultures that have kept this tradition alive. And now I'd like to introduce to you Peter Greco. The floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you all. Thank you guys for setting this up. And uh, I think it's a kind of a interesting and important like kind of topic today. And part of what we're going to talk about, I guess, has to do with the place of lettering, traditional lettering in today's world, you know, whether it fits in with uh, design curriculums, how it's thought of as a communication tool, um, because I have uh, something to say about that. I don't want to say it right away. I'm going to save it for a minute, having to do with, because um, there's changes in the college that I teach at, at Art Center College of Design, and um, uh, it's kind of something of concern that I want to uh, bring up. But just to give you, well, you already gave my history, part of my history, my really early history, at least when I was in New York. Um, yeah, um, my teacher that I learned really got started with was Ed Bengat, who has recently passed away. I don't know if you knew yeah. that, Tony. I know him, yeah. He was yeah. My you, you knew him. Yeah, I, I just knew him as a student. You know, I moved out of the New York area before I really had a chance to develop uh, real relationship, but he was my boss for a while. Yeah, he worked at the Little Bound Studio for a few years. He did, yeah. yeah. I was with him when he was the, the type director at yeah. um, photo, photo lettering. lettering. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I still have great memories of him smoking his Paul Malls and that little funny room. guy, very yeah. funny man. <laughs> he was. He was a really witty guy, he, he really fun teacher. Um, as a matter of fact, I did. Did you happen to know this? I'll just say it really briefly, but I was introduced in his lettering two class to Helvetica by Mel Brooks, <laughs> the film director. He yeah. was friends with Mel and he brought Mel in and he was pretending to be a Dr. Helvetica. Oh. <laughs> and he was wearing like a tweed suit. He Sounds was, like him. It was, yeah. It, we were terrified. You know, he was yelling at us like like he was the Nazi or something. One, like, one of his Helvetica. No, one, no, you know, like one, um, one of his greatest fun. jokes that I tell whenever I lecture is he, he said, do you, Tony, do you know what a, a schmuck is? He's somebody who gets out of the shower to take a pee. <laughs> that sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, he had he really kept us entertained. Every time I go into the sh I take my shower, <laughs> you I think, think about that, that joke. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to think about it every time I take a show. That's funny. But, um, you know, um, it's really hard to explain to students like what went on 
in like a shop like photo lettering, um, you know, they, they had like a balcony area and all the type designers were up there sort of in secret drawing all the fonts, the ITC fonts. Uh, yeah. Ed had just finished Bookman around the time. Oh, yes. I mentioned that was a big endeavor for him. He really put a lot into that. And yeah, and you know, um, composing type means you're in a dark room with a reel of film exposing type onto a photo and photo this paper. And photo editing means is the next guy down the line where you would receive that. And then we used to put it through a waxer and put it on our board and like edit it, you know, make the spacing a little more perfect. And I clean up lines and stuff with a little exacto knife. And that was so tedious. I don't miss doing that <laughs> anymore. But um, yeah, so um, I came out to LA, you know, when I was in New York, I really didn't like the opportunities. Although if I was a little more confident and ambitious, maybe I would have sought employment like with Herb or, or somebody, mm -hmm. you know, uh, happening, but the studio, but um, for some reason, I was just kind of poking around, like trying to get freelance work. I made what I think is a little bit of a mistake going a little too fast into freelance work without mm -hmm. a little more mentorship and mm -hmm. training with the top studio. You know, um, that kind of happened the same later. Same thing last week. I said the same yeah. thing that I should. And I, the advice I was giving you students is stick to the best people that you can find mm -hmm. and stay with them as long as you can. And yeah, learn as that's much good as advice. Can, right? That's really good advice. And some people are, were just so eager to get out there on our own and just start getting our own jobs. And we think we can make more money maybe doing that, but that's up and down, you know. But when I moved out to um, LA, the big thing that was going on was film logos. There was so much work available. Um, the people, the other designers were telling me I just sort of missed the era of album cover design, mm. but film logos were, were really, and there's so many studios out here. I worked pretty much for every studio as a lot of other lettering artists did at that time. So I would like to start by showing you guys some of those um, logos. And some you'll recognize, a lot of them, and Tony really understand this, a lot of them are merely preliminary comprehensive designs that were never selected. <laughs> um, but I, I don't care, I show, I'll show them anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start the screen share. Uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, let me fix that for you, Peter. Okay. Okay, uh, should be good right now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to start with, say, this one. Whoops. Okay. Right. Th this is like the first series of work I ever did. I did a lot of these logos while I was in school. Uh, this one, this one, and this one. And um, I did not design this logo, which you've seen probably on film. I only uh, executed the final artwork, um, but all these other are, others are my designs. Um, now, when I go back, what do I do to go back? Are you using PowerPoint? No, no, oh. I'm just going from my photo collection. Oh, I see. Um, how do I go back? Uh, Peter, right where you're, um, the window where the red, yellow, and green uh, buttons are, there's a yeah. arrow that's pointing to the left. I, I practice this and all of a sudden I can't do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd love to hear it. Right. I get it. I got it. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Um, that was my first logo. It was a rubber stamp. And uh, this is Henry Winkler's production company. Um, this, a lot of the, you can see the influence of 
like Tony's work and the Herb LeBallon School, this was highly influenced by stuff I had seen like Herb LeBallon's logo and, and things like that. And I really tried to get that kind of flavor. So there's a bit of influence, New York influence. Um, actually, I want to choose from, I don't want to do it this way. I want to choose from Yeah, I want to choose from here because they're not in order. Okay, and just to show you a variety of how many different types of, you know, movie logos I worked on, they're always pushing. It's so hard to decipher and interpret what they're looking for. Um, a lot of times when I do these, I, I really think I nailed it, but then um, they don't select it. This one was used, the Arabian Nights. And this was used, but they altered it and colorized it in house. So how did I do that? I, mean, I went. Oh yeah, that button. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll show you some more. Okay, these are have all been used. Um, this logo, Splash, was really highly influenced by the Grumbacher logo. Uh -huh. You remember that with the highlights yes, on it? Yes, yeah. I remember when I got that look, I was thinking, God, how do I make it look wet? And, you know, and then I remember that and I, I put that on my desk and kind of imitated it to some degree. You know, I would even put like Tony's work or um, uh, Tom Carnese's work, sometimes blow it up and just put it in front of me, even if it wasn't some a style I was working, just to kind of remember like, the level of excellence I'm like reaching for, you know? And I don't look back to my drawing board and look up and go, no, 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 you know, and try to improve it, you know? Um, so all these were used. Okay, um, as well as this, these, these were used as well, um, films. This is for the film and then it was later colorized. And this was used, you know, this is one, logo that's kind of an interesting story because it was a Terry Gillum movie and I didn't really know Terry Gillum's work or his mindset you know I, I got terrible information about almost no information about the content of the movie they were still filming it and so I was lost I was completely lost what you know what is this movie I couldn't even figure out what the movie was about and if you've seen it, you know, it's not an, it's an art film um, and has a sense of irony in it. The choice of the term, the word Brazil was sort of like ironic, meant to be ironic because there's a song, like it's this very happy song that kind of counterpoints the industrial like horror of this world. So there was like a sense of irony. And anyway, I had no idea what to do. And I begged them, I said, please send me more stills from the movie. And in the back, at the very beginning of the movie, there's, they're passing a, a bar with a neon sign that said Brazil. So I just blew that up and I traced it and improved it a little. And I got credit for inventing it. They, for some reason, their production designer, um, they forgot about him. <laughs> Interesting how that works. Films are crazy things to work on. Okay, and then what else we got? This one here. And this one's an interesting story because uh, the dances with wolves. It was very hard to interpret. Kevin Costner wanted like authenticity. And, you know, I kind of was lost with that, like authentic type of that period that was really interesting. You know, you think like cigar labels and old fashioned things like that, but that wasn't appropriate, that style. So I didn't know what he meant by authentic. And, and another artist did some, um, kind of script that looked a little bit like this. And that was what they used. And all he meant was authentically written, like written by hand. So I missed the interpretation on that. But then they asked me to create a font or rather an alphabet, A through Z, of based on this typeface that they used in the credits. And this was used on a comic book. And this one was not used. Okay. So are there any more? Oh, oh yeah, one. And then this, these were all used. 
Um, of course, this is not a, a movie. And, you know, Ed Ben Gatt had done the New York Times right. um, masthead, which is just so beautiful. And when I got this job, I, I actually brought that in and I, and I compared it, you know, when we talked about the, the style and they would definitely, the art director geared me away. He said, the New York Times logo is too gothic. It's too intense. We want it to be more modern looking. So I sort of like toned it down a little bit. And um, the Cheers logo. And, uh, this one I did with a pointed brush. I didn't really draw that. I, that's calligraphy right there. Okay, so that's all. Oh, and then and I apologize for the terrible picture quality of these. I just getting, I'm getting a new phone. So I'll, I'll get better pictures. Um, this is like the title page uh, of, uh, of a book on the art of the, the movie, the production on it. Okay, so next, now I want to just show you kind of a variety of, of lettering images. Start with this one, again, terrible picture. This was for a restaurant. Um, the thing I always liked about this was the kind of the shape it made, you know, it just kind of felt well balanced. And actually it's a very sharp, clean inking, believe it or not, um, can't tell from this picture. This one, which I used as um, kind of the title page of my textbook for my expressive art uh, type class at Art Center. And this one was very inspired by the New York School. Um, there's that logo, Steelograph, I think. Steelograph, it's yes, and Steelograph. I, I had that in front of me the whole time. I tried not to copy it exactly. I kind of added my own little flair and I, I thinned it down a little bit. Okay, and here's my personal logo. I just developed this um, based on calligraphy, but... Um, actually an inking. I like that, it's nice. Oh, thank you, thank you. Here I incorporated. Mm. I'm, I'm planning on making a t-shirt. <laughs> I wanna put that on the back real big and, and color. Makes it, it also makes a nice tattoo. It, yeah. Well, being from LA, I am a little inspired from street culture and tattooing. And it's amazing, the tattoo artists, how, how good they become. Um, I'm really amazed at that. Um, okay, I showed most of the images there. Okay, now um, let me show you this. Um, this is a wall, actually there are three walls in a restaurant in the arts district downtown. And that was a really challenging project. First of all, it's not chalk. It's um, China markers and colored pencils you know, like a white watercolor pencil um, to make it, because that's more permanent, you know? And um, I really did this as a showcase kind of for myself. I went so far over budget as far as time. It took me months to work on this and I really wasn't getting paid appropriately, but um, I really wanted to just make a real statement. And even though I didn't get paid that well for it, um, I get, maybe $1,000 a year, and it's been seven years since it's been up, from film companies who pay me like a usage fee to have that in the background of a scene. Wow, that's it. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. I, and this one, I had in the back of my mind when I first started laying it out of the CBS wall. That yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That was a big inspiration for this. I'm, I'm, since I showed you that chalkboard piece, I'll show, show you other, other ones. This is the same restaurant, giant Spencerian. And this is also a different wall in the same restaurant, a real close up view. And I'm aware of the time, okay. And then just some random lettering 
pieces like this one, which I did just for a poster. I really kind of went crazy on this. I had so much time at, in this moment of my life. I really got deep in, into, uh, and that's an inking, traditional inking. Um, and then there is, okay, here's other just random lettering pieces. Um, this is for, was for a book, the epilogue. That's, that is actually a pencil drawing on really fine Strathmore paper. And um, I haven't done it yet, but it should scan really well. You adjust the levels to scan it in, you adjust the levels and the contrast, and then you vectorize it. And it's just like having, it's like, it's like a bitmap as if it was created originally from the start. Oh, here's the other chalkboard piece. That's like an inset in the wall. It comes on and off. You can unscrew it. Okay, and a couple more like this. This piece is on the interior wall of Laguna College of Art and Design. That's a little detail from it. You can see I'm influenced by all kinds of exotic forms of type. Another, that's the same book. Again, a pencil drawing. And more of that. Another one, same book. Kind of a fuzzy drawing. Okay, here's this one. Okay, that's an inking, fancy schmancy. It was for a product line in Beverly Hills. Okay, and then which one did I miss? Oh, this one. Okay. And then this one again, I, I really wanted to just kind of test myself, uh, you know, because at that point I was getting pretty good at the Spencerian and I wanted to see, can, you, can this go so far as to become a work of art? You know, something sort of unusable maybe as communication art and um, really just to see how many lines can I fit in? What's possible? Um, now that's just sitting in my flat files actually at this point. Um, I have just a couple more of these. This was a tattoo shop in uh, Tahoe. And it was eventually colorized. That took a long time. That really killed me, this one. Oh, more chalkboard. That's the same restaurant. I'm really proud of this one. This, uh, it was so hard fitting that type together and envisioning like how much blank space um, to have and how much density. And last chalkboard piece. This is a different company. Well, my approach to doing these chalkboard things is not very economical because I, I draw it all on my desk and then have it blown up and then transfer it down. Most people who do this style just walk up to the board and just start sketching loosely, which is a good approach too. Um, but I wanted more really tight, like kind of like a, almost like a directory of styles just to, excite people. Okay. This was just experimental thinking. I really just wanted to explore Canto's decoration. And then lastly, this one, which is an inking on uh, vellum, uh, not vellum, mylar, the plastic film, which allowed a lot of touch up. Again, I wanted to see how many lines I can fit I don't know, I should have been an engraver maybe. A little too much detail, but um, I made prints of this. And actually at the Society of Calligraphy, I sold out all my prints. Everyone loves that one. Peter, okay. you'd, make, you'd make a wonderful counterfeit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I actually admire count, counterfeiters. I know they have a bad rep, but they, they're, they have so much skill, those people. Um, just another experimental piece. Okay, 
now. Um, oh, and this, this um, one of the only like actually printed pieces I'm showing. Um, this one actually a Griffiths Award. It's kind of a big deal. The owner wasn't crazy about it. He bought it anyway, but he wanted punk lettering because this is like a, a, a rock club. But I just refused to do punk. I told him right off, get a punk to do it. That's what I told him. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And now, um, now I want to, okay, explain about, I know I'm aware of the time too, that um, I've sort of, um, oh, let me show you this one, two others before I get into my other style. This was a signboard. We made prints from this and it went in front of that restaurant that I did the elaborate chalkboard mural. And then this one, which I don't really promote anymore, but um, at the time I was really into that. Mm. And, uh, I saw the Beautiful. Feedback, yeah. and, uh, actually, I gave it away. I decided not to make money on that one for um, copyright reasons and stuff. I don't want to get into any conflicts. I actually gave away some posters. Okay. So <laughs> about eight years ago, I believe, I got this decision from being high, just from being in LA and driving around seeing all the cool graffiti, and especially the ca calligraphic style of graffiti, not the spray paint so much. Or, you know, people like Retina and Chaz and you know, a lot of really good people. And it just occurred to me one day that that is a, such a good approach because you can fill up space so easily. I mean, here I am using a tiny pencil. You know, it takes days and weeks to develop or something. Whereas with a big wide brush, you just saturate the space, you know? And you can get so much done that makes such an impact in, in, the, in the community that you put it in. You people, you can't miss it. Um, so let me show you. I wanna kind of do it in order. There's my first one. The first major one I did was, let me know if you see, um, oh, the, here it is. This is on the American Hotel, kind of a famous location right in the heart of the art center. And I actually left some of it blank so I could go back and just spend a Sunday afternoon adding things to it. So. Do you, do you, how is that protected, Peter? Is well, it, it's not. It's not. It's not. So any schmuck graffiti artist could screw you, right? Yes, they could. Um, they could put a I, piece of plexiglass over it. Um, uh, yeah, but you know, there is a product called anti-graffiti. Mm. And it's like a varnish. And you paint it over. It's just that it gets so shiny and it's kind of yellow. Mm. And I didn't really want to use it. And people were telling me, don't, don't even bother doing that because People are going to respect it. No one's going to tag it. And it's been up for eight years. It got tagged wow. once, only once. And um, I think there's more respect these days, you know, for, for mural I art. I hope so. Yeah. And so I developed this style of Gothic lettering based on Gothic textura, um, a little bit of fractor, um, Cato flourishing. And I kind of um, developed it into... Well, this one will kind of explain the style a little bit more. These are my, my fractor capitals. Um, but actually, I'm not even using my main font in here. Um, but I wanted to show you that. Well, like on this one, this is actually inside Art Center. But you can see that, see, these are words that are hard to read. But I developed a whole series of abstract glyphs that I mix in and out you know, of, of the type. And I line everything up like text because I want when people to look at it, I want them to think, oh, writing, that must say something. And then they look at it and they realize, well, those aren't letters. What is that, Arabic, you know? And it challenges their perception. And yet if they, you spend enough time, you can, you can begin to read it. There are hidden words, uh, hidden messages in there. Um, Where's my big one? This is my 
big. Oh, this is just a comp. Actually, that no, that's just a comp. That is like a turned into a 22 foot wall in the arts district. But you can see here at eye level, I put the legible type. And then everywhere else, it's all, all this is purely abstract. And this was influenced by like uh, pinstriping they do on cars and stuff. So I'm like a merger of LA, New York, like kind of influences. Um, I don't have too many of these samples of the Toltec. I call, that's my street name, Toltec. See up here it says Toltec. There's a whole story behind that, my little monogram. Um, Peter. Yes. Hi, I'm, my name is Lauren. Um, what years did you work with Herb? Well, actually I didn't. I worked at photo lettering with oh, Ed Van okay. Gatton and he worked for Herb and the LeBallon studio was close by. I worked for Herb. You did. And Tommy. And, and, Tommy. and Tommy. Really? That oh, was, yeah. How, how long did you work for them? Oh, about three, four years. I started when I got out of um, art school and I went to School of Visual Arts. Yeah. See, that's what I should have done. Why didn't I? <laughs> I was just curious because I had never met you. You just don't look familiar to me. I was around for a while there. Matter of fact, Tommy and I were together. We were going to be married at some point in time, but... Oh, yeah. um, I was with them when it was uh, Bonder and Carnes. Oh, wow. wow. That's going way back. <laughs> oh, is it ever? <laughs> well, that must have been a great experience. Well, I met people that, I mean, Lou Dorsman. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name from Avant Garde magazine? Um, Ralph oh, Ginsburg. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Ralph Ginsburg. <laughs> and um, and Seymour Quast and Milton Glaser were around the corner. Yeah. Right. And yes. there was always chance meetings with them. And he taught at visual arts. Um, right. uh, Milton Glaser taught at visual yeah. arts. Yeah. I had him as a teacher. You know, twice and, I signed up for his class and then I couldn't take it because it was some. And I ended up not taking Can you believe I went through? I shouldn't even admit that without taking Milton's class. Well, in those days, I didn't even know about Cooper Union. If I had, I probably would have tried getting in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I got into visual arts and I went there for, I didn't go the full three years, I went for two. Mm -hmm. And I had such incredible teachers. And, um, but my experience working with Tommy and Herb LeBowen was absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. I used to go up to Herb's little office on his, um, on the roof, in, in, you know, in the little thing he had up there. And I used to, he used to grab a stool for me to sit on and I would sit behind him and watch him work. Mm -hmm. I'm left-handed and mm -hmm. he was ambidextrous. Was he? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's I funny. Used he to... let you watch him work. You know, that's interesting that you said that because when I was at photo lettering, I really wanted to design fonts and, you know, they were like, ah, oh, you young punk kid you can't design fonts and one day I, I went up to where they were making the fonts and I, it was like behind a curtain like kind of studying how they did it and then, and I got caught and I almost got fired <laughs> <laughs> well I used to sit and watch also Tommy I've never seen anyone work like that in my entire life yeah. and they taught me I learned hand lettering mm. um, my problem was being a lefty and a severe lefty yeah. i mean my well, right hand my right hand does nothing but to do fine lettering like that was almost impossible for me but i used really, to because of the you were covering like up you the work yes as you're working you right know, as you're working you also mess research. it up yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you smear it you mess it up and mm -hmm. also the, the line of of lettering it tends to be for righties Especially when you do the kind of work that you do and Tommy did, where it flows. It's not just a straight. Actually, when I think stop. of it, making a spencer yeah. thing at an angle, yeah. that goes against the grain with the left hand, whereas it's yes. natural with the right. Yeah, yeah. and I, I oh. taught, I was a, an aide for a while, and I taught young kids that were left-handed how to, how to write because um, all you have to do is turn the paper. It was yeah. just amazing. Whenever I had a left-handed student, I would first say... You, would ever yeah, uh, you know, get the rules I'm giving you. 
turn sideways, upside, anything that works, you know. Yeah, yeah but, but they didn't teach me that when I was in, uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, I was um, yes. terrible, terrible handwriting. And then um, my mother, God bless her, worked with me and taught me how to write properly. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, hey, um, Lauren, I, you know, it sounds like a really a lovely story. Uh, can we uh, get back on a track? Of, uh, maybe oh, yeah, I'm minute? sorry. No, no. Oh, well, no, sorry. that was okay. interesting. Um, you know, just one or two more images, and I'm going to stop screen sharing. I just want to show you just one or two other samples of a private project that I, I'm working on. Um, I guess I only have a couple of samples. Oh, here, here's the one I want to show you. Of, of, um, I'm making a oh. book. It, it's a long story, and I really uh, I want to be I want to leave time for questions. But I, I invented a character who created this artwork in, during the Renaissance after taking part in the conquests. It starts in Venice as he's a typesetter, but he ends up becoming a um, I mean a type uh, um, creator. You know, working with the, the matrices and filing type. And then he goes through all these adventures and then he returns and writes, does this whole series of manuscripts. You see all this Mayan and Aztec imagery. It was such a fun project. Um, I just wanted Look, to share it. That's very personal. It looks like uh, Greco's Bible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one, one other page, maybe. It's kind of his note. This is from his notes. And I mix <laughs> Latin and Italian and Mayan and everything. OK. So that's end Fantastic. of the, Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I wish I could do okay. that. <laughs> well, I'm sure. You know, speaking of what you do, I had a question for you. Mm. Because as I mentioned when I first started speaking, um, you know, Art Center just recently canceled all hand lettering classes. And mistake. It, really, thank you. Um, and I'm kind of fighting. The good thing about our center is even though they do things like that, because um, they're so forward looking, like futurism and minimalism, kind of mo very modern kind of mindset. Um, they, it, at least they're very, they, they'll listen. They'll listen. So I have their ear and I've been, I have an appointment with the, the, the um, chair of the graphics department and I'm gonna try to make an appeal to bring it back. Um, and I'm just wondering what like at Cooper Union, like what was their attitude as far as the graphics department? Did they see it as a really um, vital part of communication? It's essential. It's, it's reading is fundamental. Lettering is fundamental in graphic design. I mean, for 500 years, the history of, of communication arts was all about typography and printing for 500 years. 500 years. 500 years. And, 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 uh, everything, put that on my letter. Yeah. Everything, everything is, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, there, there are movements to dismiss typography and lettering because they, they see that as a kind of basic tech, tech, technical, uh, technology in a sense, especially in the age of the computer. And they don't realize that typesetting is not type designing. Typesetting is you, you right. get a typeface and a size, you know, the, that's, a, that's all you get in typesetting. So that a lot of people, students growing up nowadays think that uh, you setting type, you're, you're a designer, nonsense. It's the beginning of designing. Once you set it, what are you gonna do with it? Yeah, yeah. Well, my argument to them is going to be partially the fact that if, if you omit like what we do and, and others like us from, from the potential of, of creating a, of finding a design solution, you're just eliminating a whole area of expression and communication. Yeah, exactly. And, and the chair kind of believes that, oh, it's just old fashioned. No one that, wants that I, I, I and feel I like wrong. I feel like yeah. punching such people out. I really do. I mean, I it's, that. I, well, well, why not eliminate life drawing? Why not eliminate painting? Yeah, I, there you, you go. know, yeah. Yeah. 
Still okay, good. You're just... charging me up for my meeting. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. these yeah. people, I don't know what their background is. They're probably business people. I don't understand them. Yeah, I mean, actually, we laugh at people who can't appreciate like beautiful type and, and really yeah. has that skill level. And it's like to think that the chair of the graphics department can appreciate that. I could understand him putting it number two. Number one is our modern direction. Fine. But how about this? I mean, there's no place for this. So um, to me, it's foundational. It's foundational. That's like a, a designing a building without a foundation. You know, uh, yes. Anyway. Hey, Peter. Um, OK, thank you so much for your talk. Um, I think we're going to start moving on to the Q&A section of uh, this um, speaker talk. And uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hands. Uh, and if there is not any uh, questions at the moment, uh, we're just going to start off with um, the question uh, created um, that Matt. Oh, we have one by Andrew McTavish. Uh, the floor is yours, Andrew. Oh, hi. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to, to cut you guys off there, but I, I had a question for you, um, uh, Peter. I, I was curious, uh, since you also talked a lot about uh, retinas work, uh, you know, the, uh, the graffiti artists here uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, learning that uh, you're also a uh, Angelino yourself. Um, is that oh, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, I was curious. Uh, I haven't exactly figured out um, what Retina is talking about uh, for, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, but have, have you been able to kind of um, get an idea for what his messages are on, on, on the walls and wherever you, you know, you, you see them all around, all around Los Angeles and Beverly Hills and. Well, no, <laughs> in, an, in, a, in a word, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I don't know him. I've never no. met him. I'm just familiar with his work. Oh, I mean, just, just, he, it's just that he was one of the first people to think of like making like abstract calligraphic type marks on a wall, you know, and it, that alone I like about him. But what he does with it and what he's trying to say, I don't really know. I mean, I, I wish I did. Uh, he doesn't seem to have that much content behind it. Um, uh, and he has a very limited approach, to tell you the truth, uh, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of guys, I think, who are not, not even talking about myself, that have excelled beyond what he does, although they didn't really originate that. Um, I know that he, the only thing I, I've ever read or heard and speaking about was just that he thought that there was that the marks he was making had a universal appeal, you know, in terms of scripts. I heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. But um, why? Why do you ask? I'm curious. Are, are you in a critical kind of mode of thought, or? Oh uh, well, uh, um, just just like you were uh, pointing out that um, when you were doing your work, I think, um, especially with Art Center, when you had your your glyphs um, that you would write within uh, uh, with the Gothic black letter. Uh, but you would also do um, messaging from it, like a kind of a, uh, a way of like little messages or code. Yeah, I would for try to put in positive philosophical or poetic messages. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I was curious, since you had uh, practice doing that, I was wondering if you were able to decipher um, right now's oh, work. Uh, uh, well, you know, that's a good point. There might be a lot more to it. it and maybe it really is. A, it, does, is it a code? I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe it's a code. Maybe he's saying something. You know, maybe, I never even so. really yeah. thought of that. Um, I know a lot of the other artists don't don't really use it as a code. It's more like they don't even make letters. They just sort of make abstract sh shapes. Mm -hmm. Most most. Um, so I think the better ones actually incorporate words and letters. Um, but uh, that that's really interesting. Um, well, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. So next time around, maybe. Uh, yeah, I was, I was curious. All right. Well, you yeah, you open up more questions than you know, more questions than answers. Sorry. Oh, oh, no, thank you, though. I, yeah, I, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time and 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 really showing us uh, 
a magnificent world uh, out there uh, with with black lettering and and hand lettering design. I, my mind exact is is blown as I'm sure a lot of people here. So thank you so much for for, for yeah. For here. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, and then our Matthew uh, Tapanaz actually has a question too. Uh, so Matthew, if you'd like to unmute. Yeah, um, so my question is, because you have such experience and have such a long history with hand lettering, is there anything in the modern day that you're influenced by? Oh, yeah. Um, like, I mean, I, I, I search Instagram constantly for, I, I'm really, influ I'll tell you the truth, I'm amazed at the certain artists, I mean, I could give you a list, I don't have any names in my head, but I think the, the, some of the younger people are doing outstanding work. I mean, they've just really um, taken it to a level that now I'm learning from them. It's like, God, I never thought of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way they, they uh, uh, maybe stretch the letters or add funny details that I never thought of. And um, uh, so, yes, I'm very influenced by, by young people. Yeah, which is good because just following up, because I know we're talking about Art Center, it's just like, so you do see people are still inspired by hand lettering. And it's great to see that. So I'm glad, I, I hope that helps your argument in the case for- You know, know. what though? I tell you, the truth, I don't see it so much in the environment. I, you see it in the weirdest places, like on tattoos, like on people's bodies. Mm -hmm. or tattoo shop logos are really interesting. Yeah, they do have- right? And then yeah. once in a while there'll be products. Um, there's, there's so many good designers these days. I think you guys have an advantage over us, a disadvantage and an advantage. I think that the disadvantage is that it's just a different world and maybe you don't have the time to develop the skills the way we did, or maybe you do, but the, the advantage is that you can see, there's so much to see and learn from, you know, mm -hmm. digitally. You yeah. can just, we didn't have references for black letter. I, I searched and searched, you know, and there were fonts, but, you couldn't really find like today the way you can just find so many great um, samples and, and learn like uh, at a faster rate. You know, so I think you're capable of absorbing the lessons. And, and not only that, but you know, you're learning from like my generation, you know, Tony, which I think we're better teachers maybe than not to say better artists, but better teachers than the teachers who taught us. We give you the shortcuts, if there are any, and a little more direct, I think, you know, and practical in our approach. Generous, maybe even. Thank you. No, oh, that was great. Thank you so much. Sure. Oh, uh, Peter, I have a question, actually. Um, can you actually explain your street name, Toltec, which means man of knowledge? And you maybe knew that. How did you know it meant man of knowledge? Uh, I've, 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 I've studied, uh, Chicano history and, uh, Chicano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. And maybe kind um, of like we could extend that to person of knowledge. But, oh, person. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And then maybe like elaborate on how this philosophy can help support aspiring designers and hand letterers, I guess. Well, you know, for, you know, it's weird because I taught a workshop at the Society of Calligraphy in LA and there was a little misunderstanding. Some of the students thought, wow, this is Peter's interpretation, Toltec uh, Gothic is Peter's interpretation of the way the Toltecs would have written if they had a language. And it's like, what? No, it's not. It, it's just arbitrary name I chose because it sounds cool, number one. And number two, I really do study. Like I'm a, I consider myself like a student of philosophy and world religions. And I really do a lot of reading about them, kind of a Mayan history buff to some extent. And, you know, Toltec has a, is a beautiful philosophy. I mean, it, it, it's pretty amazing. It has a lot of correspondences with Zen and philosophy and Buddhism. And, um, you know, it kind of used to be taught just as like sorcery, you know, um, today it's, it's, if you find uh, certain authors, um, it's a, much more of a very practical, but w mystical at the same time kind of philosophy. And I just practiced some of the meditation techniques that they offered. And um, 
you know, the whole thing about being a Toltec is expanding your awareness. You know, um, they used to take drugs, but now you're supposed to do it, do private intent and focus, you know? And um, so I just like that. That's one of the main reasons I chose it because it's because their focus is on perception. And I'm kind of addressing the idea of people's perception when I do my, my writing and how people perceive type. Sure, thank you so much. Sure. I could go on talking about Toltec all day, but it's not appropriate really to get too, too far into that. All right. Um, and I guess uh, just as another question, um, I collected some questions from other uh, students who couldn't make it here today. And um, one student actually asked, uh, what resources do you recommend for students who want to try their hand at hand learning? And uh, this question goes towards to uh, you, Peter, and also Tony. So um, please let us know your thoughts. Well, Peter, you want to go first? Yeah. No, you go first, please. Well, I was going to say uh, somebody previously asked uh, inspiration and so forth and so on. Uh, I think that you mentioned Instagram. Check out people like Alex Troshut, T R O C H U T. And Dan Foster in England, D of F O S T E R. Uh, um, can you spell yeah. that again? I'm sorry. F O S T E R. Oh, Foster. Dan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Alex Troshut, T R O C H U T. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, study the, the, the classics, the Herbal Balance work. All I have to do is Google search from Tom Carnes. Um, and, uh, you know, people like, uh, Peter Greco, I mean, you did, I, I, you, if you look at all of his work, I mean, it's, insp it's, it's inspiration. I mean, I look every PC show tonight, I look at it and said, God damn it. I wish I could do that, you know? And, uh, that's, that's how you tell when something is damn good. It's something you wish you could have done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay? So um, there's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of reference. Uh, there are books on, on calligraphy. There are books on- Actually, There's uh, lots of uh, good books out there. Spencerian. And tutorials too. Yeah, you, you, can, uh, you can buy my book, Love, Love Letters. And Doyle, Doyle, uh, Doyle the Young's work. Doyle, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so there are plenty to, for you. Uh, to look at and just really observe and absorb, observe and absorb mm -hmm. the stuff, you know? And uh, believe me, it will creep inside of you and it will be, uh, you will retain it. And, uh, you know, just like Greco was inspired by Ed Van Gat, you know? Um, that we all, we all have uh, sort of influences that you know, also also influencing who was my peer at the time was Gerald Werther. Mm. He, oh yes, he, yeah, Gerald Werther, yeah. Michael Dorette. Yeah, there Michael Dorette, Gerald Werther. Yeah, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Who studied with Do Doyle Young? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I knew Doyle. I knew yeah. Doyle. A really nice gentleman. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He was an art center. He was uh, art center for quite a while. Yeah. You know, if you go on Instagram, you can, you know, search categories of type too. Yeah. If you're interested in a specific style or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then you find a whole bunch of stuff. And um, the, right now, Instagram is my main source of inspiration mm -hmm. at the time. And, and also, you know, if it's not, it's related yeah. to hand lettering, of course, it's not yeah. the same, but you can also take um, workshops. Um, like with society, uh, calligraphy societies. I mean, it's, it's right. sort of like a, a cross training kind of a thing where it's good practice. Um, and um, there's some really great teachers out there um, and sign up for a workshop. And they usually have like a five day workshop or even a one day workshop or go to a society where they're having mm -hmm an event that where you can actually learn directly. Yeah. These are people, these if are people who, getting... yeah, these are people who love lettering. I mean, you know, that's a big, somebody said the, the love of lettering is the beginning of typographical wisdom. 
you know, and I can't, I can't put it better. Love of lettering is the beginning of typographical wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you need a source book. Here's one, okay? And if you order it for me, I'll give you 25% discount to students. Oh, okay, okay, 25% discount. Well, will you sign a copy for me? Of course, yes. Okay. Cool, cool, thank you very much. Yeah, I guess it definitely plan on getting. You know, the words, love of lettering is the beginning of typographical wisdom, would make a nice lettering piece. Yeah. Using yeah. those words. You pick any quote from any philosopher and you could, that would make a, a beautiful uh, lettering piece, you know? I, yeah, with my, I'm always searching for words. I have a notebook filled with little words and phrases and passages and trying to, you know, when I do something on my own, mm -hmm. so I'm not getting paid um, just so I have it handy. Like, okay, what am I going to write? You know, <laughs> and then just kind of look it up. Hardly ever my own words. I like other people's words better, real writers. Thank you for your answer. Um, and then uh, I think Matthew has one more question uh, and then we'll uh, be ending this session. Yeah, so just for both of you, Tony and Peter, um, where do you see Hamidering going in the future? What, what would you guys want to see it go in the future? You guys have any thoughts or concepts of what it might look like in the near future or what you want to see? Well, I, I suspect that the computer is all pervasive and uh, that's going to have an influence. If you look at history of lettering and typography, uh, since the beginning to the 2000 year history, the tool determines uh, some shapes and form. And uh, I suspect that um, the computer is going to have a heavy influence in that. And, and the only problem I have with the computer is that it's going to be pretty damn cold compared to the warmth of a, a handcrafted yeah. thing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. The warmth. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Even though you can get amazingly creative with the computer, think yeah. of types of solutions that you wouldn't even be possible to do by hand, repeating things and creating effects and, and all oh, that. And the speed, the speed is incredible yeah. with a computer. Whereas yeah. in the old days, things had to be done with paste up and rubber cement and T squares and triangles. Yeah. What a. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't miss that too much. Although we still both, when we sit down to work, we got the T square and the triangle and the tape, uh, forever peeling tape and sticking it down vellum and all that. But yeah, I, I agree with that. It's. I'm the only thing that worries me about the future is that even though people and students are encouraged to be highly creative and inventive and really think of new ways of communicating that as good as all that is, it, it, it's not enough. It, it, it ends up too often looking cold, kind of like a machine made it. Hey, I'm not in a hurry. Okay. And I, I love the combination. You know. The, the person who can draw really well and vectorize on the computer, they're the ones who have the best chance of really evolving, I think, the art form, the best of the new and the old. Thank you. I appreciate you guys' thoughts on it. Yeah, so I guess that's it for me. Well, I, well, I think that um, there's some really great questions. Um, and um, you know, seeing your work, you know, again like this, uh, Peter, is just just remarkable. Um, you know, I think that you know, it's too bad that we weren't able to see it live, you know, in person, you know, because your the details and some of your work that I've seen personally, and as well as Tony's work, just goes so deep, you know. And uh, hopefully, when all this craziness kind of get away, that we get to have you and Tony and the rest of the people's work. Uh, on campus, so we'll we'll work on oh, that one. But yeah, you know, this has just been a wonderful that. session. Hmm. Well, I'd love to um, come out. So, Josh, yeah, yeah, no, I know we're, 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 we're come out. Yeah. Business trips, best way. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. The CSU has a budget for that one, but we'll we'll, we'll do our best in that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, Josh, do you have any final thoughts before we end the session? It's been a really right. great uh, session again today.
Yeah, thank you everyone for coming here today. Uh, please join us next week when we have Greg Lindy of Lux Typographic uh, joining us and speaking about his process and his work. Um, and before you go, uh, please make sure to check out Tony, the website for this virtual exhibit. As we know, this exhibit is focused on Tony's mastery of typography and his 50 year breath of work. Um, you could check it out at the link that I just posted at the chat, which is importfrombrooklyn.org. Um, check out his works. It's been quite an honor just to compile this gallery and put, set this whole thing up together. And also I included a link to Tony's uh, shop, which where you could buy some of his merch. And that is gonna be oh, on yeah. Yeah. com and uh, slash t Tony dash TZ. But yeah, please check out the website and also sign up for next week's uh, guest speaker talk, Greg Lindy. So uh, thank you again, everyone. And um, yeah, uh, please have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Um, and let's thank, you. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really good yeah. question. Nice group of people. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I look forward to next week. Peter, send me your email and your address. I'll send you something, okay? Um, how, what should, how should I send it? Um, to what is it, to you? Uh, at text, it, an email? It, yeah, you could send it to me at S-P-I-G-N-A, number one, at AOL.com. The, the number sign? Or yeah, yeah one, number one. The, oh, just one, okay. Numeral one, yeah. Numeral one, and then what followed? At, at AOL.com. It's Spino one at AOL.com, without the DI. Hmm. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good weekend. Um, bye, guys. Bye. Have a good weekend. Yeah, bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.